and welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. It's week two of the Elite League season. We've got fights, we've got hits, we've got goals. We've got so much coming up for you in the next hour. We have all 19 goals scored between the Sheffield Steelers and the Coventry Blaze last weekend. Five Flyers fly to the top of their Challenge Cup group and we'll have all the rest of the action from around the Elite Ice Hockey League. Well, welcome back. You'll see I'm joined by the Coventry Blaze head coach, Paul Thompson. He'll be reviewing all the action with me this weekend. In fact, we'll start with Paul's team's visit to the Motor Point Arena, where the Blaze took on the Sheffield Steelers. Chris Ellis will talk you through this one. If it's goals, goals and more goals you're after, you're in the right place. Sit back and enjoy the next four and a half minutes. I'm not sure the netminders, though, will be rushing to watch this one again. Ashley Tate in the box for the Steelers, and the Coventry Blaze take full advantage. Cameron, the man on target, at 144. So the depleted Coventry Blaze, who won in this building in pre-season, they take the lead on the power play. Now, Tate could do nothing about the first goal. He was sat in the penalty box, but he was out and leading the power play, still in the early stages. And Michelle and Shields combine here. And at three minutes and 12 seconds, Ashley Tate pounces. First goal of the season for him. First goal of the night for the Sheffield Steelers. We're level at one. As I say, that was three minutes and 12 seconds for that one. And 37 seconds later, the Sheffield Steelers are still on a power play. And once more, they're moving it around nicely. Jorgensen and Pekka combining this time, and Limbright scores. So the Steelers turn the game around. It's 2-1 Sheffield, and the Motor Point Arena is rocking. And just to complete the symmetry, another power play goal. This time, shoot from left side, his first of the regular season. And the Steelers, who were 2-1 up, are pegged back to 2-2. There was a fight as well. Jurdis against Fata. A good fight, some good punches thrown. Could have done with lasting longer. Both of them go to the penalty boxes. And Fata waving to the crowd. I think he could be a favourite this season for the Sheffield Steelers. Still in the first period. It's a rebound goal there for Tyler Michelle. He reacts first, and at 12.48, the Steelers edge in front once more. What a start to the game. You barely have time to catch your breath. And still in the opening period, it's a two-on-one break for the Sheffield Steelers. They're coming forward. The Coventry defence can't get back, and Jonathan Phillips scores his third goal of the season. End of the first period, saw a 4-2 game. Now, how do you find out if this one's crossed the line? Referee Michael Hicks finds a way. He jumps onto the top of the net and looks down. It's called planking, I'm told. And Hicksy does that one, and it's no goal. So 4-2 at this stage, and that becomes 4-3. Brad Lieb from the right-hand side. I think the Carra will want that one back. And six minutes and two seconds into the second period, it's a one-goal game. And suddenly we're level when Guthrie sneaks one in the near post. It's 4-4 at the halfway stage of the game. What a game it's been as well. And we're tied at 4-4. Steelers have a response, though. That's a blasting shot from Jorgensen. That's 5-4. The lead's changing so many times. Jorgensen scores and the Steelers have the advantage in the Sheffield Arena once more. This is the goal of the night, though. Michelle, one end of the ice to the other, comes through two challenges. Some really just go away from him, don't they? But that's a lovely goal, and no wonder the former Cardiff man is absolutely delighted. Let's see that one again from a different angle. He comes at speed. Then no match for him, Coventry, and it's a 6-4 lead for the Sheffield Steelers in their own barn. They are ecstatic. But Coventry, they would not give up. Guthrie scores his second of the night. Smith and shoot with the assist. So it's a one-goal game, and it could be anyone's. Such has been the shootout nature of this one. But the Steelers, they're strong. They really want to get this next goal. And it's no surprise when it goes to Tyler Michel. A hat-trick goal with one minute and 49 seconds remaining in the game. That, you would think, sews it up. Hat-trick for Michelle and a 7-5 scoreline. Now, just out of your picture here, you see it in your picture, but there's an incident just out of your picture and it involves a bit of trouble. In the end, it's Limpright who goes for a game misconduct. It was a clash with Olsen. You can see that neither side really 
too happy in the end. Both sets of players coming together. But the result of this one was Michael Higgs giving a game misconduct to Limpride. He's taken off the ice. But the Steelers will take the points in this victory. Sheffield 7, Coventry 5. An early victory for the Sheffield Steelers then against the Coventry Blaze. Before we talk about that game in, uh, in greater detail, Paul, uh, the start of the Elite League season, I, I think you'll agree, has been an exciting one for everybody, hasn't it? It has. Lots of new players. I think everybody's upgraded. I and mean, We've talked about that all summer, haven't we, David? And, uh, you know, the depth in the league, and it's in not just the divisions, in the league as a whole, and, and it's showing in the results. Fife have come off to you know, a fantastic start. It was their, you know, inaugural season last year, and you can see now they've learned from that, that, that year together as a group. And, uh, you know, we played them. They're looking for, you know, a real tidy outfit. It's a new Coventry Blaze team, isn't it? You had a big overturn of players coming in, going out, and it's a, it's a different ethos. You've almost gone back to what made the Blaze successful in your recruiting this year. Yeah, you know, we've had a couple of years of mediocrity, and that's something that you know, people in Sheffield, myself, uh, Coventry, I should say, aren't used to. And uh, we've had a big overall, you know, we've tried to up our quality of our import player and bringing through some you know, younger guys and some fresh guys and trying to develop them over the next few years. And uh, you know, I'm really happy with what we have right now, but unfortunately, you know, we've been hit by a lot of injuries and um, obviously we're still waiting on Mike Downton, Danton outcome. Talk us through that game then. It ebbed and it flowed, didn't it? Both teams had chances to win it. Well, you know what? Five goals on the road in Sheffield, you normally should be getting something out of that. And uh, special teams were key for both teams on the night. Power plays were, were potent and uh, you know, a 12 goal game, great for the fans, a couple of fights, you know, hits, incidents, I think it had it all, I mean, from my point of view, it didn't have the result, but, you know, we lost uh, Gadis after the first period, so, you know, we were four key players down, three imports and Cowley down, and, you know, I just like the way we battled all the way to the end, and, you know, Sheffield scored a late goal, uh, one which Hershey had liked back, and then, obviously, you know, there was the incident with, uh, with Olsen and Limbright. I was just going to say, let's take a quick look at that at the moment. We can see part of it, can't we, uh, just off the plate. This is just with a handful of seconds remaining. What you see there? Well, you know, what I saw was, uh, you know, both guys were taking a hack at each other and Limbright slashed him across the shoulder or the top of the arm. And then, you know, there was a meeting together and, uh, you know, myself and 4,000 fans saw the stick across the face of Olsen. And you can see the reaction of my players afterwards. Unfortunately, the cameraman didn't pick it up uh, on the review of the video and, and, and the three officials never picked it up on the night. And uh, I think Zorro should find himself very lucky he didn't get a long suspension for that. Yeah, you spoke to the officials after the game. What was their opinion? What were they saying to you? Well, they saw the slashes, <laughs> but they didn't see the, you know, the incident across the face, the stick across the face. And, uh, I find that a bit hard to believe, considering it was a millisecond after the slashes. So, you know what? They're good, honest guys. They didn't see the incident. Uh, and I think, you know, like I say, Limpright can find himself lucky that he's not being handed a 10-game suspension for that. Because if he was Olsen, David, yeah. if it was the other way around, because his reputation precedes himself, he would have got the ban. OK, well, that's game one of two games between the Sheffield Steelers and the Coventry Blaze. We'll see the game at the Sky Dome in a short while. Another two teams that were playing each other twice were the Nottingham Panthers and the Belfast Giants. Both games at the NIC in Nottingham, where Doug Christensen took his Belfast side. Remember, Belfast had that slightly slippery start last weekend against the Brayhead clan. Could they do any better in Nottingham? Over to you, Chris. The first part of a double header, a chance for both sides to set the benchmark. Two of the teams that are sure to be there, right at the top of the table. First goal of the night, though, went Nottingham's way. What a scramble. And somewhere amongst that lot was Matt Francis to make it 1 0 Nottingham. They had 18 shots to Belfast 9 in the first period and hit the pipes twice, but they could only score once. And Belfast took full advantage at the start of the second. Adam Keefe with a goal. He was to be involved in plenty more that Belfast did on the weekend, but that was 1-1. David Clark falls over there on the power play, but gets back up, and a neat power play move by Nottingham. What a pass from Nielsen, and ghosting in at the back door was Robert Lakovic. That's 2-1 Nottingham at 22-45. So what a start to the second session. A giveaway by Nottingham this time, and that one goes in. It's 2-2, Fournier, 23-26. We see the teams tied at 2-2, but again a mistake from the defence. It's Fox with the move on Murphy. That's 3-2 Nottingham at 27-11. The mistake that time by Sam Roberts. So 3-2. 
But suddenly, another scramble in front of the net. This time, all sorts of players just want to get involved. Kowalski moves away from this one, but Keefe's there. Fox is there too. Benedict's watching things. Keefe going to the box, still chirping, still having a word. So at this stage, it's 3-2 Nottingham. They have their noses in front. Three times they went in front. Fox, you saw there, just going into the box. So they have the advantage at this stage, but that's a leveller. It's 3-3, Phillips with the goal there, over the shoulder of Kowalski. And for the third time, the Giants come back into the game. Now they're coming forward once more. Their tails are up. Left-hand side, the work was done. And ghosting in at the back door was Champagne against his former club. It's 4-3, and Giants are ahead for the first time. So to the third period. Incidentally, that was just with two seconds to go in the second. And in the third, that's Sam Roberts with a move. Nice finish at the back door at 53-29. Giants come from behind. Nottingham 3, Belfast 5. Strike one then for Doug Christensen and the Belfast Giants with that Saturday victory over the Nottingham Panthers. And Doug will be relieved, won't he, to get his first win of the season after the hiccup against Brayhead. Well, absolutely. And going into Nottingham, you know, it's one of the toughest, if not the toughest place to go and play. And, and, and to get that, that first league road win, he'll be... I mean, I spoke to him on the Monday morning and he's absolutely delighted with his team's performance. He's five goals as well at the NIC. It looks like he's got some offence. We'll see a couple of these goals that Belfast score. And it's a new look offensive unit for the Giants this year? Well, yeah, like a lot of teams, they have the big turnaround in players, but, you know, they've got some real good skilled guys. And Tuggy feels he has a better offence, natural offence, than he had last year, and uh, that's a well-taken goal, passing the slot. And, you know, they are a team that's capable of scoring lots of goals, as are the Nottingham Panthers. They had hundreds of American League games at the back end last year, a little bit less experience at the back, but they held the Nottingham Panthers to just three goals as well. So, Doug will be, Doug will be pleased both ends of the ring, won't he? Absolutely, absolutely, because, you know, on, on many occasions this year, the Nottingham Panthers will be scoring, scoring more than three goals at home. And it looks like Stephen Murphy has started the year where he left off last year as the league's number one goalie. Well, he's an excellent netminder, David. He's one of, or if not, the best in the UK, and he gets better with every year, and, uh, you know, that gives Dougie the 11 out, out imports, if you like, playing imports, plus, you know, their, their, their team's stacked full of GB internationals, as, as is both of the teams on show, and... Uh, you know, they're going to be tight games. It's going to be like that all season. It is indeed. Well, that's game one then to Doug Christensen and the Belfast Giants. We'll see the highlights of the following night's action in a few minutes' time. Time for a break now. When we come back, three Scottish derbies for you to look forward to. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Let's head north of the border where the Five Flyers were taking on the Brayhead clan. This game had double the importance. It was both a league and a Challenge Cup fixture. Chris McEllis will talk us through this one. Set your watches for this one. First face-off and Fife win the puck. Clock ticks over. Count them. There's nine seconds before Pittant and Haynes combine to set up Chris Hogg. Nine seconds, one of the fastest ever elite league goals, and the home side are right on the mark in the opening seconds. Still within the first five minutes, and it's power play time for the home side, and there's an almighty scramble, and Hogg scores once more. Again, it's Pittant and Haynes with the assist. That's 2-0 to the home side. What a dream start against their Scottish rivals. It got even better at 10.04. Again, it's the man advantage. Again, it's a scramble. And this time, it's Casey Haynes scoring. It's 3-0 in the first period. Now, something needed to get going for the Brayhead clan, and we see a fight. It's Brock McPherson who's going for it. Thomas Muir for the Five Flyers. Muir with some good rights there. You can see him going. McPherson trying to get going too. He's got some good rights. This is a good long fight, a good old-fashioned hockey scrap. And looks like the linesmen are looking at it go. Look, they keep going. McPherson going over the top there. That's a good fight. And both players can come out of it with a lot of credit. It's finally broken up. 
but two guys going hammer and tongs at that one. And certainly Brayhead needed something to get them back into the game. At this stage, it was 3-0, and they needed something to inspire them. Did that fight inspire them? Well, maybe it did to start off with. That's a lovely feed there from Hayward and Bobby Shamol back with the Brayhead clan. That's a 3-1 game then, so they are back into it, are the clan but things didn't get much better. Five on three power play time. This goal was all about patience, and it was Hames with his second of the night to make it 4-1. Time was running out for the visitors to get back into the game, and in fact, it was the home side who completed the scoring with John Dolan. Final score, 5-5, Brayhead 1. Call me an old romantic, but I love to see the Five Flyers doing well in that building in Kakadi Fall. They've had a great start, haven't they? Big win against Brayhead. Two team and Stewart have recruited really well. Their D's a lot more mobile this year. Their British players have that one more year experience in the league, and they're all contributing to their offence as well. And, uh, you know, we played them a couple of weeks ago, and I like the look of the team. Zemlak was a hero, wasn't he, in Fife last year? He goes back for his first game back in Kakadi, a proper game. Nine seconds in, he gets beat. So I would imagine the old heart was pounding. Yeah, maybe a few, a few nerves there, but... Uh, it looked like a convincing win on the night for the Flyers. If Fife are going to do well, and we'll take a look at some goals here now, Paul, they've got to find some scores, and they look like they've got a couple as well. They got off to the best possible start, we'll see here. That hog looks a player, doesn't he? He does. He plays on their top line, and uh, they got some talent. Poor old Sam Lack, first save, second save, and it's back of him. Yeah, I mean, you'll probably want that one back, and, uh, you know, that's a great start. And in that building, once you get an early lead, if Fife get an early lead, it, you know, it magnifies the whole place. And, you know, it's a great atmosphere in the old barn. I would imagine Jordan Kristanovic just can't wait for Jay Galbraith to get in the lineup. He needs a full lineup. There are defensemen missing as well, the plan. I think any team that misses a talent like Jay Galbraith, and he's paid me £20 to say that, is, uh, you know, you're going to miss a talent. I mean, he was, the, you know, he, was the, he was the stud player in the league last year. And, uh, yeah, they'll be, they'll be looking forward to getting back so he can create his magic offensively. From his that point of view, will he be glad to get that first game out of that barn where he was so hero-worshipped out of the way and, and then just get back to regular play and then going back into Kakadi just as a regular player? Yeah, without a doubt he will. Without a doubt. They always go one way or the other when you, when you go back to your team, your old team. Well, the Five Flyers got off to a great start, and it sees them at the top as well of the of the Challenge Cup group. We talked about hope, didn't we, this conference system, the Challenge Cup system, and, and the Five Flyers right now must have plenty of hope. Well, why, why should, I mean, they've had a terrific start, you know, and they've got good players, good mobility, they've got a good power play, they run their power play way, I mean, it's a way higher level than it was last year, and that's been a big tool for them right now. Just like the number 22 bus. You have one, then another one comes along, and then another one comes along. Another Scottish derby, Dundee versus Edinburgh. Away you go, Chris. A Scottish derby for you to enjoy, and one that was thrilling from start to finish. 75 shots on target throughout the game, 36 penalty minutes, but not much power play success. There were 17 power plays on the night. This is one of them, and you'll see the only goal in the power play situation. There it was, AJ McLean, assist to Baxter and Wirral, but just the one goal in the 17 power play opportunities for both sides. So that was 1-0 to the home side. They certainly were enjoying the better of the early stages. They were looking to go 2-0 ahead, but look, Edinburgh breaking down the ice and into the offensive zone. It's neat work from them. Haleko involved, a 1-2 with single. It's single who scores the goal. So we're tied at 1 at 12.33. Now, watch this closely. Dundee think they've scored, but the officials wash it out. It didn't cross the line. The goal is stick was right on the goal line, so that stayed at 1-1. No matter for Dundee, they certainly kept things going, and they certainly were moving the puck around nicely in the corners. The first goal of the night, of course, as I said, came from AJ McLean, and this one was a lovely move from Mike Whirl. It was Ryan who got the assist. But Wirral with that move in front of the net. We've seen some special goals this season already. David Ling scoring a couple of decent ones for Panthers and Silverthorne for the Stingrays. But that was a great goal from Wirral. Then at the other end, a chance for Jade Portwood, 23-year-old Canadian, straight from college. And that one stayed at 2-1. So the Edinburgh Caps needed to come back into the game for a second time. And who do they normally turn to when they need to get a big goal? Normally Hartman or normally Yarolin. They're certainly the players involved. And look, Hartman sets up Yarolin. We are tied at 2-2. And suddenly it's game on. 
Now, who was going to get the crucial goal? 2-2 in the Scottish derby. Which way is it going to go? Netminder out of position, and suddenly there's a chance for the Dundee Stars. And there it is. Christian Harper, the former Hull player, the former Panthers player, scores into an empty net to make it 3-2. And that's the way it stays. Look, Netminder just couldn't get back in time, and it finished. Dundee 3, Edinburgh 2. Congratulations, Jack Watkins, a game winner as the Dundee Stars beat out the Edinburgh Capitals. And uh, he's recruited well, hasn't he, Jeff Hutchins? Uh, new look team. Brent Hughes disappears in the summer. Dundee could have been in a little bit of a, a tricky situation, but uh, but Hutchins has done a fine job in Dundee. He has, and, you know, and another team that, you know, uh, they look better, they look like they've upgraded every position, and I think he's... he's He's got over the border and he, he went into England and he raided Hull. He took three of their young, talented players, you know, back up. And, you know, Watkins being one of them. And, you know, I had Watkins a couple of years ago when he was 17, 18. And, you know, he had a year in the Elite League in Hull last year. And uh, he's obviously seen what he, you know, likes what he's seen from him. And he gets the game winner in a, in a big local derby. Never really worked out for um, Christian Harper, did he, to McCluskey in Hull. They're, they're better suited up in Dundee for some reason. Well, I think Harper got a, he got a shoulder injury. And I think that kept him out most of the year. And, and you know... But for whatever reason, you know, these guys are free agents at the end of the season. You know, they're both, you know, played for Dundee before. They have them roots there. And, and, and Jeff's gone back there. And Dundee are missing a couple of players still. And, and when they get their full roster, I think they're going to be a tough nut to crack. So do I. I think Dundee might just well be the dark horse of that, uh, that northern group. Anyway, let's have another Scottish derby. It's all about Scotland in part two. And this one is the Edinburgh Capitals taking on the Five Flyers. An Edinburgh Fife derby, always one to excite the fans. This one in the Challenge Cup, and while Edinburgh's season still really needs to get going, the Flyers have won their previous two in the Cup in Group A, but it was the home side who rocked into the lead. 69 seconds, Martha Semberg makes it 1-0 after only one minute and nine, and things got better at 6.23. Good movement, nice movement of the puck in front. And the player coach, Richard Hartman, made it 2-0 then, as I said, at 6.23. Under a minute later, the Flyers, well, they got themselves back into the game. They needed a quick response, and they got it from John Dolan. So they made it a one-goal game. Keister and Stewart setting Dolan up to make it 2-1. And even before the 20-minute mark, before the end of the first period, we see Danny Stewart, the former Newcastle man. He ties things up at 2-2. And the time of that one was 15.22. So plenty of action in the opening period. It was an even game in terms of shots on goal, 22 each. And Brian Pitten then, 22 shots on him. He on his way to leading the Elite League's net mining stats after the opening games. That was Fife getting in front for the first time. Brian Pitten's brother, Jason, getting in on the act. Haynes and Hogg getting the assist, so that's 3-2, and that's at 28-10, so before the halfway point. And the only other goal came from Chris Hogg into an empty net, so the Flyers make it three straight in the Challenge Cup, and they top Group A. Edinburgh 2, 5-4. A good victory on the road for the Five Flyers against the Edinburgh Capitals. And as we said previously, Five have started well. Your first views on the Edinburgh Capitals and, and how their league campaign started because they did so well against the Brayhead clan last weekend. Well, a huge home win in their home opener. I mean, I think they were, they were 3 0 up against the Brayhead clan, who we, you know, we've all tipped to, to run away with that conference. And, and the clan brought it back to 3 3. And I think, you know, Edinburgh went on and, uh, and won it in penalty shots. And, but, you know, they need a couple more bodies. I think you know Scott Neal and Hartman are looking around to you know to just give them that little bit more depth uh, going forward. But you know they proved on any one night you can you know you can beat a team. And uh, but Fife right now, David, they have the momentum. Um, With Edinburgh, Yarralin was a key last year. He scored hundreds of goals for the Edinburgh Capitals. He needs a little bit of secondary scoring, a bit of moral support, doesn't he? Without a doubt. I mean, everybody knows about him now. So you know teams will be checking him and, and making sure that they, you know they keep him under wraps because he can score. He's a talented player. Let's see how the Edinburgh Capitals are doing then in the Challenge Cup. It's a dominated group by the Five Flyers right now. As you can see, they have six points from their three games. Brayhead playing 500, three from three. Dundee with a victory from their only game so far. And, well, the Edinburgh Capitals know that the Belfast Giants are going to pick up points. And the Edinburgh Capitals may well be the team that miss out. Even only two weeks in, it's looking like they won't be the team that proceeds into the quarter-final. 
OK, well, that's all from part two. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the action from Sunday's games in the Elite League. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Time to have a look at Game 2 of that Nottingham Belfast series between Corey Nielsen's Panthers and Doug Christensen's Giants. Doug Christensen at the upper hand after a 5-3 victory on Saturday. Time for revenge maybe for Corey Nielsen. Did he get it, Chris Ellis? So to Nottingham against Belfast Part 2. A great start to the game before the first face-off. NHL legend Yari Curry dropping the puck to the delight of everyone in the arena. A fight in the first period. New boy for Nottingham, Jason Beckett, number four, against, well, you know him well now, Adam Keefe, 47 for the Giants. This one was a clear win for Keefe. In fact, the linesman breaking it up, the jersey of Beckett going over his head. Keefe, well, he was enjoying it. He was like the pantomime villain playing to the Nottingham crowd all weekend. He was certainly smiling at the start of the second period when his teammates combined and the goal there for Robbie Sandrock, a former ISL player, of course, for the Giants, got 30 points in 32 matches in the Super League back in 2002-03. Nottingham, though, got an immediate response. Once again, a man advantage for them. They were good on the power play this weekend. Robert Lakovich with the final touch there. That's suddenly a 1-1 hockey game. Now, mistake in the Panthers' defence and Scott Champagne scores. He's the man right on the doorstep, his second goal of the weekend against his former club. Stewart runs Kowalski late, so there's a bit of a free-for-all. It's Stevie Lee very much involved, Keith involved once more, and Bruce Graham. You see plenty of players. Ling there you can see too. It was Stewart, though, that started it off. He was taken to the penalty box. Now, Panthers on a power play here. Very much involved Corey Nielsen, always at the heart of the Panthers' power play. Shot from the blue line. It comes to Gallivan. Save once more from Murphy. And Francis scores. It's a 2-2 hockey game, and we're going penalty shots. So the first man to go, and it was for the Belfast Giants, Peacock. Could he give them the advantage? Yes, he does. Good move on Kowalski, so that's 1-0. David Ling, been such a hit for Nottingham so far this season. Can't pull off the move, takes out referee Michael Hicks. So it's 1-0 Belfast. Fournier now has a chance to make it 2. Pad save from Kowalski. So Francis really needs to score for Nottingham to get them back into the game level at 1-1. Had a great weekend. That's a neat finish. So we are 1-1 in the shootout. It's Clark to put Belfast back in front. No, he can't. So Gallivan steps up for Nottingham. Number nine on his back. Can he win it? Yes, he can. And Nottingham take the extra point. It finishes after the shootout. Panthers three, Belfast two. Big penalty shot shootout win there for the Nottingham Panthers. Isn't it strange to say big win and we're only in the second weekend of the year? But it was a big win for Nottingham. Yeah, it's a, it's a good bounce back for them, David. And, and Christensen will be over the moon. You know, he's gone into Nottingham. He's, he's got three points in the weekend uh, on the weekend. And uh, you know, with both games being on the road, and he, he'll be delighted with that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, put yourself in his position. You, you're going to be. But you know, the Panthers came back and they found a way to win with that. You know, that penalty shot win tonight. And uh, you know, that gives them uh, you know a, a, a solid two point base. Dougie had taken three points out of those two games like a heartbeat, wouldn't he? Oh, any of us would. You know, I mean, it's a tough place to go and play. And uh, yeah, they, they would have flown back the following morning, being very content with their performances over the two games. Everybody's talked about David Ling in Nottingham, haven't they? As being this go-to guy they've brought in. That Gavelin looks on player though. Yes, yes. No, I spoke to him briefly last year as well, and he, he stayed over in uh, in North America, I believe. Uh, Nottingham have offence coming out of their ears. I mean, you know, they really do. I mean, I, I think they've, they've, they've possibly upgraded offensively on where they were last year. And you've still got guys like Clark, you know, who, who rattle in 35, 40 goals a year every season. And, uh, you know, they're going to... We all know they're going to be a tough nut to crack. They will indeed. Time for more action now. Two games for you from Sunday. The Dundee Stars, they entertained the whole Stingrays and a cracker down at the Big Blue Tent where the Brayhead clan went into Cardiff. 
Both sides went into this one with plenty of confidence, especially the Stingrays after their thumping victory over Cardiff the previous Thursday. First goal of the night at 3 minutes and 56 seconds. Five on three power play goal, Wirral and Bowen combining for Sammy Ryanen, only goal of the first period. Into the second period then, and the visitors got back into the game at 3.47. This time, Ryan Hand and Jeremy Tendler combining, and in front of the net was Kel Kanaka, so he made it 1-1 at 25.11. At the other end though, booming shot from the blue line, I think we'll see that more than once. In fact, that's the second time this season. Pat Bowen. That's 2-1 then to Dom D. So he got quite feisty as well. Both coaches getting involved in penalty minutes. Sylvain Cloutier had two minutes for roughing. And later in the game, Jeff Hutchins getting a 10-minute misconduct. You always felt the game could bubble over, but it never really did. So 2-1 at this stage to the home side. And certainly the Stingrays needed to get back into the game. But there's a mistake there. And can the Stars? Yes, they can. Jack Watkins at 44-20. It's a mistake. It's Tanaka actually with a mistake. And Jack Watkins, who got some great praise from his player coach after the weekend, he made it 3-1. And it really did look to be game over. Silverthorne and Tendler combining here. That's a good save, though, by Riapal. So he keeps Dundee at 3-1. Still trying to chase the game. Were the... Hall Stingrays and Dundee coming forward looking to make the game safe. Coming forward down the right hand side. At this stage, of course, it's 3 1, but suddenly there's space for the Stingrays to come forward. And it is Tendler down the left hand side. He's the man who creates this goal, gets his own puck. And when it comes back out in front, there is Veleko to bring his team to within one. But that's the way it stayed, and it finishes Dundee 3, Hall 2. Both sides had a point to prove in this one. Cardiff beaten 7-5 in Hull in their last outing. And then the Brayhead clan lost 5-1 on Saturday night in Fife. But the first goal of the night, player coach Jordan Krastanovic. So 1-0 to the visitors. Phil Hill so often so strong in the corner. He's the main creator behind this goal. And skipper Stuart McRae. He has the final touch to that one. So it's 1-1 and we're level in the second period. Now, plenty of the Devils goals this year, six so far, have come from Mac Fogner. Well, look, this is goal number seven for him. He's the league's leading goal scorer. And the Devils have turned this game around. It's 2-1 to them. Kristanovic once again involved for the visitors. He moves into the offensive zone and gets the final touch to Goldie and Farmer's creation there. So it's 2-2, and suddenly Brayhead are on the up. Then a lovely feed there from Adam Walker to Watt at the back door. That's 3-2, so the game changes hands once more. 3-2 Brayhead, and they're suddenly in the ascendancy. Then, who else but Faulkner tries to get things going, celebrates that one, but the officials rule that one out. He's still celebrating. He's joined by Josh Batch, and suddenly he goes over and sees that that one has been washed out. All sorts of people talking to the officials. And you can see from the bench, the Cardiff player's not too happy with that one. So it's still 3-2, and the Devils need to find a leveller. Time was running out. We're into the final three minutes here. And the time of the goal is 57-14. Barry McKenzie to level it up at 3-3. So to penalty shots then. Don't forget, Cardiff had a dreadful record last year. Kostanovic for Brayhead is denied. Faulkner now at the other end. Can he add to the goal he got in the game? No, he can't, so that's still nil-nil. Netminder's on top. Former Steelers man, Burns still. He has a chance to go. Can't get through, can he? Can't get past the Zer. Kenton Smith scored in the playoff semi-final last season. He can't score either. So we're going to penalty number three for Brayhead. Ash Goldie, he's denied. So Chris Blight, he could win it. This could be the winning penalty shot if he can find a way through. He's denied. So it's Kostanovic, player coach, scored twice in the game and scores in the shootout. So Faulkner, he now has a chance against Zemlak. Faulkner needs to score. 
He can't and Brayhead win. A good comeback for Brayhead and for Zemlak, who of course was part of that 5-1 loss to the Flyers on Saturday. Final score, Cardiff 3, Brayhead 4. 54 shots, Zemlak stops in Cardiff. Thoroughly earned a man of the match performance and uh, Zemlak can do that to you, can't he? He, he kind of bounced back from a slightly dodgy Saturday and came back with an outstanding Sunday. Well, yeah, that's some performance. I mean, we talk about, you know, Nottingham, Belfast, Sheffield being places that, you know, are tough to go and win on the road, but Cardiff and the way they play, and, and it's like a game of pinball in there, you know, pucks are bouncing and coming back off the boards. 54 shots, that's a lot of pressure on a net minder over 60 minutes, and, you know, obviously, he obviously stood up and, uh, and did a great job for them. And while, of course, he was making the saves at one end, player coach Kristanovic at the other end, uh, he's scoring some pretty important goals as well. We've always known he's been a great player, Kristanovic, it's going to take him a while, though, to settle into this player coaching role. It doesn't just flow, does it? Well, he's leading from the front. What did he get a pair on the night? And he got the penalty shot winner. So, uh, you know, he's grabbing his team by the scruff of the neck right now and saying, hey, you know, boys, this is what it takes to, to win these games in Cardiff. And, uh, you know, all credit to him. The Cardiff Devils, should they be concerned that they've lost two at home, even though they've both been in penalty shootouts? Because Cardiff will expect to pick the majority of their points up in that hostile environment of, of their own ring. No, I don't think Jared would be bothered at all. I mean, I'm bothered that he lost the game. But I, I think, David, everybody here has got to understand this year, you're going to lose games. I mean, what Belfast did in losing five games over the season, I don't think it'll happen again as the teams are getting stronger and stronger. I mean, I, I may be wrong, but I, I very much doubt that. And. Uh, you know, Jared will be, you know, annoyed that he, you know, he hasn't got the points he wanted from, from them two games, but they're a great team. I mean, and in Faulkner and in Blight, they have, you know, and Brevere back with these guys. Mm. I mean, that's, some, that's as good a line as anything in the league. It is indeed. One game to come. You'll see it after the break. It was the return game between the Sheffield Steelers and the Coventry Blaze. You don't want to miss it, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports, where you'll see I'm joined by head coach of the Coventry Blaze, Paul Thompson. Well, on Saturday, Paul took his team into the Sheffield Arena. It was a 12-goal thriller. 24 hours later, the two teams met at the Sky Dome Arena. Could they do the same again? Tell us, Chris. So to the rematch in the Sky Dome, it's Coventry Sheffield again. The Blaze injury jinx is striking once more. Two of them out long term in Domish and Cowley. But they took the lead. Greg Lieb, Olsen and Griffin with the assist at 3 minutes and 51 seconds. Back came Sheffield though, just past the 10 minute mark. Lovely play from Tyler Michelle. Such sweet hands, holds on to the puck. Gives it to Ashley Tate and Tate says, thank you very much. We're tied at 1-1 at 10 minutes and two seconds. But watch, shoot now. One end of the ice to the other and he does shoot. Pass to Caro at 15.43. A 2-1 hockey game for the Coventry Blaze. Now, Limpright is strong on the board. He is the key to this play. So strong, comes out to Fatter. Right side, top of the right circle. It's 2-2, thrilling first period. We're level at 2-2. Now, Sheffield, in the second period, got a great strike from Legree. His first goal of the season, that's a lovely one from right point. So Sheffield into the advantage at 3-2. It was a feisty game. There's some stuff going on here just off camera. It was high sticks, and two players got thrown out for high stick penalties. Olsen and Legree. All sorts going on here. Plenty of players getting involved. And the referee, Andy Carson, telling the players to calm down. So 3-2 Sheffield at this stage. And then a special moment for Dale White, his first professional goal. He plays for Blazes National League Northern side. He used to play for Oxford and before that Solihull. But here he levelled to take the game to overtime. And in that overtime, Colin Shields was on hand for the extra point. And that was Sheffield's four-point weekend. Coventry three, Steelers four. Colin Shields with the winner as the Sheffield Steelers rounded off a four-point weekend. With the lack of depth that you had with the injuries, the suspensions, with everything that's gone on in Coventry, was one point a, a positive? Or did you really feel there were times in that game where you were going to pick up both? 
Well, we were hoping we were going to. Uh, David, it was a, you know, it was a good game. I mean, both teams had chances to win it in regulation time. I thought start of the third period, I thought we were coming on strong, and the Carroll made a couple of you know big stops, and then. I thought Hirsch did the same towards the end of the third period as we started to tie and, and you know we were down to three defensemen and, and, and six forwards at that point and uh, you know depth is always going to be a problem with even to start the season but then to lose the guys we have. I was very proud of our, our battling performance, obviously the Steelers come away with the spoils, they come away with the two points, I wanted to split the weekend, that was kind of my main goal even though I wanted to win both games, I wanted to split the weekend. But you know, you have to understand as a coach what you have, and uh, we had kids playing for us on that night that have never ever played at this level before. I was just going to say, the guy who got the 3-3 goal, what a night for him, young uh, Dale White, scores his first professional goal. Yeah, and we, you know, I put him out with the Liebs in, in, uh, in the second and the third period, and uh, you know, they were great to him. You know, two experienced professionals, and they kept talking to him on the bench, and they, they made him feel easy. And, you know, I heard Brad say, just go to the net, kid. He says, if I'm driving wide, just go to the net. And, you know, Brad threw one on. There was a big rebound. And uh, the young kid who's, you know, played the last three years in the Oxford City Stars and, you know, and, and probably dreamt about playing yeah. at the elite league level, you know, jumped onto the rebound and got us, you know, and, and basically tied us a point. Classy moment point. as well. Got to mention Mike Egner. I, I saw all the Coventry players go to the young kid and Egner skate away. I thought, oh, you miserable so and so. But actually, then you realise Egner went and got the puck for the lad, and you only score your first goal once, don't you? And he'll have that to uh, remember that night by. Egner's a classy guy, mm. and I wouldn't expect anything different from, from a player like that. And yeah, and you know, and that's a memento that, that that kid, wherever his career takes him, and hopefully this will give him a springboard to, to better things, that he'll have that memory with him for forever. OK, let's have a round-up then. You've seen all the action. Let's have a round-up of all the results from Saturday and Sunday in the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. On Saturday in the Erdhard Conference, the Nottingham Panthers 3, the Belfast Giants 5, Sheffield Steelers overcame the Coventry Blaze by 7 goals to 5. In the Gardner Conference and Challenge Cup Group A, five Flyers beat the Brayhead Clan five goals to one. Whilst in the Challenge Cup Group A alone, it was the Dundee Stars three, the Edinburgh Capitals two. 24 hours later on Sunday in the Elite League, Cardiff Devils three, Brayhead Clan four. That was after a penalty shot shootout. Third Art Conference, Coventry Blaze three, the Sheffield Steelers four again after overtime and the Nottingham Panthers bouncing back to beat the Belfast Giants 3-2 again after a penalty shot shootout. Gardner Conference saw the Dundee Stars three, the Holstein Race two and in Challenge Cup Group A, the Edinburgh Capitals two, the Fife Flyers four. Let's take a look at the three league tables. We'll start off with the Erdard Conference, which sees the Sheffield Steelers with three wins out of four and six points, closely followed by Belfast, Cardiff, Nottingham and the Coventry Blaze with one point from their two games. Up north in the Gardner Conference, the Five Flyers and the Dundee Stars, both with two points, but as you can see, only uh, two games have been played in that conference. So add them all together, what do we have in the Elite League standings? Well, we see the Sheffield Steelers on top. They are one point ahead of the Coventry Blaze, closely followed by Nottingham, Cardiff, and then Belfast, Dundee, Fife, Brayhead and Hull. Edinburgh still have got a game to play. Early advantage then for the Sheffield Steelers, but Paul surely it's too early to uh, read anything into a league table after just two weekends. I think so. I think you've got to start looking after 10, 15 games to see you know, how it balances out. But it's looking great, isn't it? Mm. It's looking great from top to bottom. I mean, on any one night, any team can beat another one. And, and that's what a good league's about. And I think a few weeks ago, we'd have thought that maybe the Erhard Conference was going to be significantly stronger than the Gardner. But early results suggest that you know, some of those Scottish and Northern teams are going to take valuable points off teams in the Erhard division. Well, teams on paper don't always end up winning, do they? You know, winning titles. So, uh, like you say, David, it's early days, but I think we're, we're in store for a, for a cracking season of hockey. I think it's got a little bit of everything. I think that, you know, offensively, I think there's, there's better players in the league. There's a, there's a toughness that's come back into the league again. I think that, that provides entertainment from the fans' point of view. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, every game this year. OK, well, talking about every game, you can see 10 of them this weekend coming up in a rink near you. Let's take a look at the fixtures in and around the Elite Ice Hockey League. We'll start off on Saturday where the Coventry Blaze entertain the Cardiff Devils at the Skydome Arena, whilst the Nottingham Panthers meet the Sheffield Steelers for the first time this season. In the Gardner Conference, the Hull Stingrays entertain the Edinburgh Capitals, that's a 6.30 start in Hull, whilst in Challenge Cup Group A, 
five flyers meet the Dundee Stars. 7.15 in Kokodi. Get your stovies ordered in plenty of time. On Sunday, the five flyers at home again, this time against Paul's team and the Coventry Blaze at 6.30. In the Gardner Conference, the Edinburgh Capitals meet the Hull Stingrays. The Sheffield Steelers meet the Belfast Giants. The Dundee Stars meet the Brayhead Clan. And in Challenge Cup Group B, the Cardiff Devils entertain the Nottingham Panthers. Another tough weekend for you. In fact, every weekend is a tough weekend in this elite league, isn't it? It is, yes. You know, we've got a tough game at home against the Devils and we have a great rivalry against the Cardiff Devils and uh, you know that place will be rocking on Saturday and then you know we take the six six and a half hour trip up to Fife and you know to play a team that's full of confidence and uh, hopefully I might you know we might get a guy or two back from injury we'll find out hopefully about Danton this week and uh, maybe I can add to the lineup to give us that depth that you know is badly needed at this point. Well you'll be able to see that game and all the others this time next week and next show Friday the 28th of September will be on at 11 p.m. on Sky Sports 4 the show will also be repeated at 1.30 on Saturday afternoon. Go and take in a game, folks. It's great action. You've seen it uh, here over the last hour. You've heard what uh, Paul Thompson has had to say. There's nothing better than an elite league hockey. So go and watch it, and then you'll see yourself next week. We'll see you then. Good night.